Mm-hmm. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of a podcast, and today we have here John. He's from the J22 Report. John, thanks for coming on again. Ah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I think it's been at least a few months since you've come on, and a lot of interesting things have happened, and uh, you have always followed the commodity markets, gold, silver, oil, uranium, and all that, and that's why I used to bring you on all the time when you're with your other company, and then now you do your own thing. Uh, so gold right now is trading at roughly 1340, silver I think in the 1720 range. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on this uh, recent move since December? Well, I would say it's twofold. I think one one of it is uh, it was sell the rumor by the news, meaning that the Fed talked up an interest rate hike in December so uh, so I guess vividly or lively or uh, I guess aggressively that a lot of traders started selling and selling. They kept selling gold, but as soon as they announced an interest rate hike and only a three three rate hikes uh, next year, I think that had sort of a dovish tone to it. But since uh, the interest rate hikes were so priced into the market, I think traders started buying gold, buying gold, and that's really it's happened the last couple of interest rate hikes where it was uh sell the rumor buy the new you know buy the i guess bad news uh whatnot that's probably what it is now you know normally it's uh uh buy the news sell the rumor but it's like the opposite of that with uh gold it's you know sell the sell the rumors and then buy the bad news uh, and that's what's been happening uh one thing about which no one talks about is i've you know, as you know, you know, you've known me for roughly, I would say, seven to eight years now. And roughly, I worked as a precious metals uh, salesman at my old company. I've been following the gold market extensively, I would say, since 2010. And January is always a really good month for gold. Even in 2013, which was the gold crash. Now, silver, I remember vividly. So these are the silver prices. But... When I say gold, I also I mean silver and precious metals. But silver rose up to thirty two dollars an ounce, and it rose from I, I believe like twenty four twenty five dollars. Uh, in fact, twenty six was strong. Uh, I guess support in two thousand thirteen, and when that broke, it went all the way down to nineteen. But in January, it was up to thirty two to thirty three dollars an ounce, and and it rose from around 25 to 26. So January is always a very strong month for gold. So I'm actually looking for to see where gold goes. I'm looking for a top around 1350 to 1360. Uh, that I believe that was like the 2016 highs. I'm looking for it to go there. I want to see what happens. But I also want to see what happens uh, in February. Because January is always a strong month. And that's why I said in one of my video earlier today that i'm just holding right now so uh, this doesn't that's what i think it is i think it's a combination of you know sell the rumors and then buy the bad news and then if you combine it with the month of january january it's always uh, been a strong month especially in uh even in 2013 which was the famous uh gold crash year january was a strong month then for gold yeah, you make a good point about seasonality. January tends to be a strong month for the precious metals. Uh, but what happened uh, late uh, last year, there was a lot of indication that the tax cuts would pass. So that being said, uh, when you have um, all of this QE and the money on the sidelines, and now the banks are going to start to lend it out and you have the tax cuts so before we had depressed economic activity and now you're seeing slashing of the tax cuts do you think that gold is showing that uh yes we will have inflation for at least the next two years well the other thing also is that on friday gold had a big day it went up like 15 dollars, and the cpi was really high 
Uh, it was I, I remember reading in Reuters, it was like the highest in 11 months, and it was due to uh, the increase in health care cost and rental cost. And I expect the CPI to keep rising uh, for main reason is rental cost I expect to go up because I don't think they'll let the – they'll do whatever they can to prop up the housing market, in my opinion. Now, over the long term, the mortgage interest deduction – uh, limit limit uh, that they m- imposed in the tax cuts that might you know depress the housing market some, uh, but I think the healthcare costs are going to keep increasing rapidly, and the main reason is the individual mandate in the tax cuts that you mentioned uh, was repealed, so you still can't bar pre-existing conditions. So, it means sick people, no matter how sick, could get. Uh, health insurance, but young people, which are healthy, no longer have to force a penalty. So I think we're going to see much higher premiums in, over the next couple of years. So I think we're going to see the health care costs go up uh, and the CPI, I think, will start uh, rising. And the reason the CPI is important is a lot of people will say, especially the libertarian Austrian crowd, that, oh, these numbers are rigged. They don't mean anything. Well, in terms of you know how well the individual and the economy is doing, they're absolutely right. But the reality is the markets and the traders care about them, and that is what influences price. So as an investor, they're important. You know, even if they're rigged or uh, falsified, they're still important. And that's you know I don't like it, but that's the reality. Uh, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. So in terms of uh, uh, also, in terms of the tax cuts, the last time we had tax cuts and whatnot was under Bush. Yeah, under Bush. And that was the beginning of a new uh, bull market. Uh, a lot of people prescribe to velocity of money increasing. My only thing is in 1999 and 2000, velocity of money was at like an all time high. And velocity of money kept decreasing from, if you look at the charts of velocity of money. So I think it's. I don't think the velocity of money theory is what influences the markets. I think it's more sentiment. And tax cuts could uh, increase the sentiment of, okay, well, people have more money, and that's going to lead to higher inflation, and then commodities go up. So I think in terms of sentiment, it could increase, but I don't think the actual velocity of money will increase, in my opinion. Yeah, in, in regards to inflation, you make good points about healthcare costs and a few other items in the CPI, like rental costs. Uh, but I also look at, in terms of inflation, uh, the CRB index. And I, I want to go into the next topic. And a l- large component of the CRB, based on my memory, is uh, crude oil and natural gas. And we've seen big rallies in those two commodities. I did videos saying that we're going to see a correction. We haven't gotten a correction. I've been burned on that. And that was just because of the commitment of traders' data showing the producers just shorting the daylights out of crude. Now, my question for you is, uh, since you look at crude oil a lot more extensively than I do, um, what's your opinion on the data coming out with the EIA numbers, the API? We've seen draws, which uh, the hedge fund guys, the money managers, uh, they're just buying oil and being very bullish compared to June. I remember telling you, like, crude is going to rally from here, right? It, It didn't seem like it at that time, but you saw a rally from about June till right now. We've continued to see that rally. I mean, there have been ups and downs, but what's your take on that? Well, in terms of crude, right now, I think anytime you have, we've had very unusual cold weather, and that generally will rally natural gas and uh, uh, oil, especially heating oil. So I think that plays a part in it. Uh, in terms of oil, is I think oil is going to make a move either direction, one way or the other, because what people forget in the 2014 crash, uh, once oil broke 94, it literally went straight down. Uh, and it went straight down, and it. a lot of people thought it was going down to 60 because that was uh, support, and it even just broke down through there and then sort of, I guess, uh, walked down the stairs, as you put it, like a downstairs walk. Instead of just falling straight off a cliff, it's like walking down the stairs to 40 and then 
came back to 60 that formed the top and now 60 dollar oil is support so i think if it breaks 60 uh it's going to go back down to 55 or 54 in there but i think if it holds and bases above 60 which i i'm beginning to think it will i think that it's going to make a strong move upward because there's very little uh resistance in the oil market now because of the crash of 2014 there's very low resistance it wasn't a very it wasn't an orderly decline it was just went right down so uh if something goes straight down it can you know take you know go straight up you know may not may not go up as fast uh because the old saying is you know markets take the escalator up and the and the elevator down i forget the exact uh phrase but i think it could go up relatively quickly so i just want to see if it holds above the six sixty dollar it's like gold i forgot to add one thing with gold is i think gold uh if it bases above 1300 and holds i think it's going to make a real strong move up so uh but in terms of oil that's what i i'm seeing is that there's very little resistance uh and if it if the sixty dollar level holds i think it could go up uh but one of the reasons I think oil is going to eventually break 60 and go back to 90, not this year, but over two or three years, is I think the dollar technically is in a really bear market. Uh, it's been breaking down. It's right now, uh, it's against the dollar index. I know uh, it's been really, the main reason uh, gold has gone up uh last year and had its best year since 2010 it wasn't really the miners didn't really have they really lagged the gold price and the main reason is the declining the dollar the dollar is now at a three-month low against the euro uh and anytime there's a big decline in the dollar commodities will get some sort of bid even if it's because foreign currencies are doing even if it's because foreign currencies are doing well if there's a big decline in the dollar commodities will get a big so bid i don't think we'll see like 40 dollar oil or 45 dollar oil or a real uh strong crash in oil because i think the declining dollar will support it uh but even the data the data isn't really that uh bullish for oil yes there's crude oil withdrawals but if you look at the most recent uh data there was a build in distillates and there was also a build in gasoline build stocks. So generally, if there's a build in distillates and gasoline, then that means that there's very there's not much energy usage, and the market will count that. So, and not only that, there's oil production is at ten billion dollars. So right now, if oil production is close to 1970 highs, uh, a lot of they say a lot of shale oil production could come online but i don't believe that because that's just hype you know they say 60 to 70 that could bring on more economic uh oil wells but the truth is this low price has kept production stubbornly high and the main reason it's kept it stubbornly high is because in order to not break their debt covenants they had to keep revenues up and in order to do that they had to increase production so i think when oil prices go up they could actually decrease production and keep the same revenues uh as a safe spot so i I don't buy the increased production theory of the 60s and 70s but i think oil will go up uh i think the weak dollar that's occurring and technically it looks in a bear market uh it's broken 94 it's even broken 92 i think it should hold at 90 uh but it looks the uh, from what chartists have told me it looks really poor and oil from 60 to 90 there's not much resistance i would say the next real resistance part is 80 so uh this is wti wex texas intermediate crude so uh that's what i'm seeing for oil you know it's going to make a move uh and i don't know which way exactly was the data's mixed but it it's going to make a move. Um, when you talk about the dollar, I do agree at the end of the year we're going to see a lower dollar. I just wanted to throw this in in terms of uh, 
the euro, which is like what fifty nine. I mean the dollar, it has like fifty nine percent of the currency, the euro, right? It's a basket of fiat currencies. And yeah. I looked in the commitment of traders, and it looks like the, not the producers, but the commercial hedgers are the most net short ever. So that being said, even though the dollar has uh, sold off quite a bit, short term, I would expect a rise in the dollar. But towards the end of the year, because of these tax cuts, uh, because of these uh, rate hikes, I, I would expect the dollar to s continue to sell off by the end of the year. And we should see higher oil prices due to the lower dollar and also the Canadian dollar goes up against the US dollar which is a good indicator of showing um, higher oil prices when the Canadian dollar goes up so those are just a few things that I noticed I was gonna say, yeah I'm bullish on the dollar on on the uh, oil prices in fact uh, a couple I think a month or two ago I bought some oil service stocks and the main reason I bought them is uh, this oil bear market has hammered the oil service sector, and they've been made to really reduce uh, prices. In fact, the oil producers have hammered the oil service sectors in negotiations over the past uh, two years. And now uh, oil service sector stocks do the best in the oil bull market. So I, I see the – I agree. I think the – I've put my money where you know your mouth is, or I've bought some oil service stocks. All right, uh, moving on to the next topic is uh, the now the mainstream media's favorite topic to look at, and it's Bitcoin, right? This used to be an alternative media discussion. Only people like you and me knew what the hell it was. And now your next door neighbor is asking you about Bitcoin, or my wife's friends are asking me about Bitcoin. So, and I'm thinking to myself, where were they – three, four years ago when no one was around in this industry. So uh, what's your overall take on Bitcoin? Uh, well, the funny you may ask this because uh, one girl I was uh, I went out with, uh, she asked me about Bitcoin. So uh, she told me she, wa she watched a documentary about it because she didn't know what it was, that she saw it all over on news. Uh, so basically, you know, I think that's that's a that's a top indication uh, if I've ever seen one. You know, if you know you have some random uh, random girl uh, just ask you about it. She's not into investing. She's not in, and she's heard so much about it, so she decided to watch a documentary. Now she doesn't have the money to buy into it, but. You know, a lot of people are talking about Bitcoin that never were. Uh, so I've had, you know, professors talk about uh, Bitcoin, which I thought was strange. And uh, at first I thought, I was like, wow, is the message about a better America that Rahul and I talk about, is it, you know, becoming mainstream? This is a uh, pretty popular. But no, they're, they're not talking about, you know, the globalist or the, NWO or you know anything like that you know they're just talking about Bitcoin so uh, you know you ask a lot of people who talk about Bitcoin ask them if uh, they heard of I guess every I think normies have heard of Alex Jones I guess you can ask them about one of the lower casting members of Infowars and if you know I bet you a lot of them will say no uh, because this is no longer a topic of discussion i see cnbc talking about it uh venezuela is now investing in cryptocurrency uh saying that's going to back it by its oil and it's going to be used to uh escape uh u.s sanctions or whatnot now i'll be honest if venezuela is investing in something i'm not really too i don't think they're the most savviest people looking at you know how they treated you know, how they've dealt with, you know, investing in their countries. You know, look at their oil company. Look at their country in general where people are breaking into zoos uh, to find food. So I don't think, you know, if you want... Venezuela seems like the ultimate dumb money, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Like, there's dumb money, and then there's, you know, special ed money. Maybe Venezuela is special ed money, you know? It's it's worse than dumb money. This is uh, uh, special ed money is now getting into cryptocurrency, and uh, it, it went up to 20000 and now it's back down to 13000 it, it reminds me of the gold and silver top, you know? This the, crypto might be where gold and silver was in 2012, where it's a top, but hardly anyone knows it. I think a lot of professional investors know that it's a top, but the average Joe, they're just intrigued by it. I mean, like you said, a girl that you went on a date with asked you about Bitcoin. My younger brother, who doesn't invest any money in the market, I mean, like he gets help from his parents or from my parents about investing, but he just randomly messaged me. So, what about Bitcoin? And I'm, I'm like, oh god. And yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I thought you were finished. No, I was just saying that it's just weird that people are just coming up to me talking about coins. Oh, it's a easy money making scheme. People on social media on Facebook talking about, hey, if you're not getting involved in cryptos, you're pretty much uh, losing all of this money. It just seems really bizarre to me. Yeah, like the funny thing is, I didn't find out about Bitcoin till. It was at like $100 a coin, and I wish I just bought then. Uh, but the reality is, is you know, I saw it was like $0.05, cents and I was like, oh, well, that's that's it. And then it just kept going up, and then in 2013, I actually called the top. And then I was like, okay, it went from $0.05 cents to 1000 There's no way it could go anymore. Uh, and when it corrected, I'm like, yeah, this is the end of Bitcoin. And I stopped paying attention, and then... In like 2016, I see the news like 12,000, 2,000, 3,000, and I was just like, you know, I, I, you know, I wish I bought them, but you know, it's one of those things. Like as someone who I don't chase things that, you know, I just don't see it going up much more. Like five cents to twenty thousand dollars, like I, you know, I, I just don't. I just don't see it going, you know, anymore. It, nothing runs that high without, you know, some serious correction. Uh, and that's how all markets work. And now Bitcoin, it's become mainstream. It's in the futures. You know, it's to the man on the street. You know, who's going to buy it? Speaking uh, of the South futures. Korea's sorry to cracking. Go ahead. So... Yeah, the futures market, I don't know if you remember that weekend, I think Bitcoin was trading near 20000 And now the hedge funds, they could short Bitcoins now and the professional investors and look at where it's gone right now. It's under 14000 So if you do the math, what, that's a 30% haircut within a span of a month? Yeah. Well, the thing also about Bitcoin is what everyone used to market was oh bitcoin can't be manipulated it's decentralized it's well it's on the futures market now so it's not decentralized anymore uh it's on the futures market so it can be manipulated uh so i i don't i think you know if you bought for those reasons and you made a profit you know the reason's no longer there so you know i'm not a financial advisor but if if those were the reasons you bought, you might want to sell uh, because it's not it's not there anymore. It's in, it's in the futures market. Uh, the same people that everyone says is paper gold, well, they can do paper bitcoins now. So uh, I, I don't see how you know the decentralized. You know, I think the story of Bitcoin has changed. Where people uh, want to admit it or not, and as I said earlier, Venezuela is in it. Like. Dumb money and smart money. I think Venezuela is, you know, you know what it is. So. <laughs> yep. Anyways, uh, John, uh, before I head off, uh, how can people follow your work? I was going to say the easiest way is two ways right now. I have a Seeking Alpha. Uh, I have a Seeking Alpha column. They can follow there. But I would say the best way is there's two ways. Uh, J22 Report, that's my YouTube channel. And in my videos, it has every social media thing I do uh, publicly. So they can they can follow me there. 
Uh, Facebook, I decided, is going to be my one-stop, you know, shop that, Steam it, or and Voice Anything will be sort of like... So I have three one-stop shops, really. Uh, Voice Anything is relatively new, but I would say Facebook, the main thing is just if I write an article, it will be posted there. If I do a video, it will be posted there. Uh, and no matter what platform I use, if I do something, it will be posted in your Steemit or uh, Facebook. So uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. Might be the if you're not if you don't want to look everything up all at once, uh, my YouTube channel J22 Report would be the best. So uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, it was a pleasure. Yep. Thanks for coming on again.